My Weirdtastic School, Book Number Two. Uncle Fred is a Knucklehead. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pillot. Chapter Five. I asked for watermelons. While the commercial was playing on the screen, stagehands ran around with brooms and garbage bags, cleaning up the confetti that Uncle Fred had thrown all over the place. Mrs. Crump, the lady who was the head of the TV network, came out to talk to us again. "Hey, kids! Isn't Uncle Fred great?" she asked with way too much enthusiasm. "Yeah!" we all shouted. I love Uncle Fred," some kid yelled. "Are you kids having a good time?" asked Mrs. Crump. "Yeah, I can't hear you." "Sheesh! That lady really needs to get her hearing checked." "Yeah," we shouted louder. "Are you ready for more, Uncle Fred?" "Yeah." Uncle Fred got up from his chair. He wasn't crying anymore. Okay, we're back," he said. "Everybody, get up on your feet." We all stood up. "You kids spend too much time staring at video game screens," Uncle Fred said. "Let's all do some jumping jacks." "Ugh, I hate jumping jacks," but we had to do a million hundred of them with Uncle Fred. That guy has way too much energy for a grown-up. I almost fell off the bleachers again. I thought I was gonna die. Okay, on to the funny stuff," said Uncle Fred. "It's time to sing a song with Mr. Dill, the Singing Pickle." Uncle Fred played the piano while this pickle puppet sang on the video screen. "I'd be tickled if I had a nickel for every pickle I ever ate. I'd ride my bicycle. I'd pedal very quickly past all the icicles." And I'd never be late. I've been playing piano for ten years," Uncle Fred said when the song ended. "And I'm really tired. I'll tell you, it's really hard to play the piano while you're taking a shower." A picture appeared on the screen of Uncle Fred playing a piano in the shower. The cue card guy held up a sign that said "Laugh." We all laughed. "Get lost, Buster!" Uncle Fred shouted. After that, Uncle Fred played an accordion. Then he interviewed a goat as if it was a person. Then we all played Simon Says. There was a tug of war contest too. Finally, some kids raced to see which one could blow up a balloon and then pop the balloon by sitting on it. It was exhausting just to watch Uncle Fred do his show. Hey Alexia, he shouted, "How are you making out with the magic treasure chest?" "No luck yet," she replied. Keep working at it," said Uncle Fred. "Next, we're going to drop watermelons off the roof of the building and shoot a video of them as they hit the ground and explode. Doesn't that sound like fun?" "Yeah." "Follow me, kids." We were about to get up and follow Uncle Fred to the roof, but that's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. One of the stagehands came over to Uncle Fred. "Uh, Uncle Fred," he said quietly, "we couldn't get the watermelons." "What?" replied Uncle Fred. The stagehand looked like he was trembling with fear. "We, uh, went shopping and they were all out of watermelons." Uncle Fred looked really mad. Are you serious? He asked, raising his voice. I'm really sorry, Uncle Fred," said the stagehand. "We went to three supermarkets. They had cantaloupes, but they were all out of watermelons. Do you want us to?" I asked for watermelons. Uncle Fred shouted at him. "It doesn't work with cantaloupes. This is unbelievable. I want watermelons. I need watermelons." Uncle Fred's face was turning red, like the inside of a watermelon. He looked like he was about to explode. The stagehand backed away from him, terrified. The camera operators looked like they were scared of him too. 
Then, suddenly, Uncle Fred fell on the floor and started kicking his feet, pounding the floor with his fists, and screaming like a two-year-old. I want my mommy, shouted Uncle Fred. I had never seen a grown-up throw a temper tantrum before. Uncle Fred was out of control. It was amazing. You should have been there. We got to see it live and in person. Chapter 6 Andrea is annoying. A bunch of stagehands tried to calm down Uncle Fred. Mrs. Crump came over to talk to us. I'm terribly sorry, kids, she said. Funderama is over for today. Uncle Fred isn't usually like this. Mrs. Crump kept apologizing, and she gave us free tickets to come back and see another episode of Funderama whenever we want. Alexia never was able to open up the treasure chest. As we left the studio, each of us got a goodie bag filled with Porky's pork sausages. The bus was waiting for us outside. So, how was Funderama? asked Mrs. Cormel. Isn't Uncle Fred great? He was awesome, said Ryan. It was cool, said Neil. Uncle Fred was totally out of his mind. We were all talking about how much fun we had at the Funderama taping. The only one who didn't look happy was Little Miss Perfect. Andrea had on her frowny face. What's the matter? I asked her. Was your clog dancing lesson cancelled again? Very funny, Arlo, replied Andrea. I'm worried about Uncle Fred. What about him? I asked. Well, my mother is a psychologist, said Little Miss Know-It-All, and she told me that grown-ups who act like Uncle Fred have emotional problems. What? I said. He was just upset because they didn't get him the watermelons he asked for. What's the big deal? Didn't you see the way he was behaving? Asked the human homework machine. He was so immature and hyperactive, too. My mom told me it's very hard for adults like Uncle Fred to function in the real world with mature people. I think he needs to get professional help. Your face needs to get professional help, I told Andrea. Oh, snap! said Ryan. Andrea is no fun at all. Anytime grown-ups act silly, she always says they needed to get help. Uncle Fred is cool. He was just having a tough day. The bus pulled up to school, and we walked a million hundred miles to Miss Banks's class. And you'll never believe who walked through the door at that moment. Nobody. You can't walk through a door. I thought we went over that in chapter one. But you'll never believe who walked through the doorway. It was us. I have an announcement to make, Miss Banks said as we walked into the room. Uh-oh. When teachers make announcements, it usually means bad news. Miss Banks took a piece of paper out of her pocket. The Board of Education, she read off the paper, has decided that due to poor test scores at elementary school, Halloween will be cancelled this year. What? No! shouted Ryan. They can't do that! shouted Alexia. It's not fair! shouted Neil. Everybody was yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering and freaking out. Just kidding, Miss Banks said as she threw the piece of paper in the garbage can. It's time for math. Today we're going to talk about irrational numbers. Huh? What's that? An irrational number, said Miss Banks, is a real number that can't be expressed as a fraction, blah, 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 blah. What a snooze fest. I have no idea what she was talking about. Fourth grade is hard. Miss Banks went on and on about irrational numbers. By dismissal time, I had forgotten all about our visit to Funderama. I had forgotten all about Uncle Fred. But he hadn't forgotten about us.